a very pleasant morning to everyone i'm very happy to wish you at the beginning of a new week and the beginning of a new day my happiness is doubled because i'm able to wish you from the very soil of north guwahati i've been addressing you from south india since april i'm happy to speak to you from the premises of st anthony school we are at the last day of the month august 31st 2020 the last day of the month should remind us of the blessings that god has bestowed on each one of us we are alive today we have received numerous blessings from god and it's time to say lord we are grateful to you god we are thankful to you and we are also beginning a new week happy to say hello to monday monday is always a difficult day for students after two days of rest you find difficult to get back to normalcy but i'm sure with good rest with a proper direction and motivation you are eager to begin another week every day is a blessing from god and therefore we shall place this new week and this new day at the feet of the lord and it's time to pray close your eyes and join me in the most familiar prayer that you have been reciting in the school for years and for ages peace prayer composed by st francis of assisi in the 12th century ad lord make me an instrument of your peace where there is hatred let me so love where there is injury pardon where there is discord harmony where there is doubt faith where there is despair hope where there is darkness light where there is sadness joy o divine master grant that i may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love for it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned in dying that we are born to eternal life amen in the journey of life we have a tendency to take many things for granted we take many people for granted and one of the most vivid example is our own parents i just want you to look at this particular pic what impression do you get when you look at this particular picture i see a mother who is doing a multitasking nobody can describe the work given to a mother or a woman in a family she does pin to pistol a to z all that you can think of she does at home in spite of that hardly anyone looks at a mother looks at a woman in the family and says mama amma mom thank you we have a tendency that it is her responsibility she has given birth she is in charge of the household and therefore she has to do those responsibilities and therefore this attitude of taking people for granted taking things for granted has grown very deep in each one of us but today i would like to invite you to remove that attitude and to plant another attitude at the beginning of a new week an attitude that says i appreciate you i appreciate you is the attitude i want you to plant in your hearts in your minds 
we should be thankful to god for giving us such wonderful mothers who do things that we can never imagine who are the first ones to rise in the morning who are the ones to go last to bed they are the ones to eat food the last if at all some leftovers i always had a question to my mother why is it that you don't eat food when i asked my mother a question why is it that you don't eat food first why is it that you don't join for meal when all of us sit down to eat she gave me an answer which she keeps repeating every time i pose this question to her she says i find more joy in seeing you children seeing my husband enjoying and relishing the food that i prepare the food that i prepare is an expression of my love and therefore when that love is appreciated enjoyed relished i feel more satisfied that fills my stomach more than the little food that i can consume a mother takes joy in seeing her children her husband enjoying the food when we have such great heroines and heroes just living around us next to us in our own homes it is time to appreciate them it is time to say i appreciate you mama i appreciate you mom i appreciate you ma and it is time to say thank you and therefore i ask you today take little time to look at the face of your mother and say mummy thank you ma i appreciate you amma i am grateful to you i am thankful to you so let us begin a new day with a thought in line with what i have shared the thought for the day goes as follows a person who feels appreciated will always do more than is expected i repeat a person who feels appreciated will always do more than is expected and therefore please appreciate people freely generously without any limitations terms and conditions appreciate first and foremost your mother your father your brothers and sisters your grandparents and i'm sure you will remove that attitude of taking people and things for granted and implant into you at the start of this new week an attitude of appreciating an attitude of thanking everyone in particular your mother your father and your dear and near ones the covid-19 pandemic has triggered our curiosity more and more we are more eager to know when the school is going to reopen when this pandemic is going to come to an end when can we move out freely when can we meet our friends our teachers when can we come and play in our school etc and therefore we keep watching the live news and therefore i thought of giving you the most important news which was disclosed by the union government yesterday important things for you to know at at this moment juncture when you are eagerly looking forward towards the reopening of the school the first news deals with covid-19 india sets grim world record with 79000 fresh cases in a single day and our mother state assam has 101000 case of infected people as on 30th august some information about unlock 4.0 issued by the union government yesterday metro rail will be allowed to operate with effect from 7th september 2020 the second piece of news is most important to you as it concerns us more after extensive consultation with states and union territories it has been decided that schools colleges educational and coaching institutions will continue to remain closed for students and regular class activity 
up to 30th September 2020. Online and distance learning shall continue to be permitted and shall be encouraged. Students of classes 9 to 12 may be permitted to visit their schools in areas outside the containment zones only on voluntary basis for taking guidance from their teachers. This will be subject to written concern of their parents and guardians. This is by way of news which you need to know the most important news regarding the COVID situation in the world in our state and regarding the reopening of the school. A directive received from the central government yesterday. I'm sure if I ask you a question, can you name the national animal of India? Instantly all of us and most of you and all of you will say it is tiger. I just want you to look at certain pics of tiger. When we think of tigers, we should be proud that India has got the largest number of tigers in the world. Just for you to have a general knowledge about list of tiger reserves in India, you can focus on this particular picture and map of India will give you the distribution of these tiger reserves all over India. The last, the beginning of that which is highlighted in black, you find a place called Satya Mangalam, Tamil Nadu. That is my native place. And therefore, my native is also declared quite recently as a tiger reserve. It's good to sharpen our general knowledge regarding the tiger reserves in India, as India has got the maximum number of tigers in the world. Uh, normally, statistics are conducted once in four years, and therefore you can see in this particular pic, a survey was made in 2006, 10, 14, and 18. It was made once in four years, and you can see a sudden rise in 2018. So, in India, we have almost 3,000 tigers, and uh, it is uh, Madhya Pradesh which has got the highest number, 526, followed by Karnataka with 524, then Uttarakhand 442, then you find Tamil Nadu followed by Kerala and uh, Assam etc. And we find India in the first place and the rest of the countries you find tiger populations given. It is for you, good for you to sharpen your general knowledge. It's good to widen our knowledge in India, we have almost, as per the statistics of 2020, there are 50 tiger reserves in India, out of which seven are categorized as the best tiger reserves in India. I have just displayed the list for you. Let me read. The first tiger reserve, the best tiger reserve in India is considered to be Bandipur. Bandipur Tiger Reserve in Karnataka, which is close to Mysore. The second one is Jim Carpet Tiger Reserve in Uttarakhand. Number three is Nagarjuna Sagar, Sri Sailam Tiger Reserve in Andhra Pradesh. Number four is Bandavgar Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh. Number five is Rantampur Tiger Reserve in Rajasthan. And number six is Sundarban Tiger Reserve in West Bengal. And finally, the Periyar Tiger Reserve in Kerala. So these are considered to be the seven best tiger reserves in India. You may be wondering uh, which are the places the tiger reserves are there in Assam. I told you there are 190 tigers as per the statistics of 2018. In Assam there are four places. One is Kaziranga Tiger Reserve. Number two, the Manas Tiger Reserve. Number three is Nameri Tiger Reserve and Orang Tiger Reserve. So these are the four tiger reserves that we can find in our mother state, Assam. Having laid a foundation for the beginning of a new poem, which is going to be the end of the unit two, we have just completed 
a beautiful autobiography last week titled Nelson Mandela a long walk to freedom and attached to that particular unit is a poem and i would like to deal with that poem today and tomorrow if possible even on wednesday if you have to understand the poem in a deeper way it is always good to know the author the writer the poet and therefore let's know about the author the poet i'm sure with the general information that i gave you regarding tiger tiger reserves the best tiger reserves the tiger reserves in assam etc you might have come to a guest work about the title of the poem that we are going to learn today the title of the poem that we are going to learn today is a tiger in the zoo this is a poem written by a well known author called leslie norris he is considered to be one of the best poets of our times and in order to understand this poem it is good to know some information about the author george leslie norris is considered to be a prize winning welsh poet and a short story writer and uh, he comes from wales which is a part of united kingdom you can see it in the following picture and he taught at academic institutions in britain and united states including brigham young university you can see it in the next slide in next to the wales map the brigham young university okay that is where he uh, taught in britain and united states and norris is considered one of the most important welsh writers of the post war period and his literary publications have won many prizes and therefore he has gained importance because he has written his poem he has written his writings after the post war post war means after war the time after the war and his literary publications have won lot of laurels appreciation and prizes he was born on 21st may 1921 at a place called merthyr tyfil in united kingdom and he died on 6th april 2006 at a place called provo uthai in united states and he was educated at university of southampton that picture you can see the university of southampton and uh, his parents were george and mary jane norris and he is won a very prestigious award called chumle award what is written and how it is pronounced is different it is called a chumle award which is normally uh, given to the society of authors and you can see the picture of chumle awards 2020 winners which means it is still existing and it is considered to be one of the prestigious awards and therefore our author, author is considered to be one of the greatest poet of our times because of the manner in which he has communicated his feelings in and through poem and his writings and norris has written number of books uh, to his credit and to his credentials uh, just to have a look at some of them title painting from life albert and the angels leslie norris collector stories sliding short stories by leslie norris leslie norris collected poems the corgi series leslie norris water and other poems leslie norris a sea in the desert etc so these are the books for you to have an idea about the books written by the poet the leslie norris having prepared you mentally regarding the tiger in india and in particular the tiger reserves in assam and having seen some preliminary information about the poet leslie norris it is time to get back to the text proper normally the poem is read by the teacher the model reading is read by the teacher and you are expected to pay attention to the reading with utmost attention 
and therefore kindly take your textbooks page number 29 and listen to the reading done by the teacher a tiger in the zoo written by leslie norris he stalks in his bib with stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars let me read once again he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage he should be lurking in shadow sliding through long grass near the water hole where plum deer pass he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws terrorizing the village but he is locked in a concrete cell his strength behind bars stalking the length of his cage ignoring visitors he hears the last voice at night the patrolling cars and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars having listened to the teacher the model reading of the poem a tiger in the zoo it is time for you it's time for self reading and therefore please read the text at least twice and underline the difficult words try to open your mouth and read aloud that will help you to pronounce the words and understand the meaning of the poem having listened to the poem read by the teacher and having read the poem yourself let me have the joy of introducing the poem to you let me just introduce the poem to you today and we shall take up the explanation tomorrow stanza by stanza in detail by way of introduction this poem a tiger in the zoo was written by leslie norris and leslie norris explains the agony and helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo the poet norris explains what is life could be if he had been a free animal the poet is try to explain about the condition of animals that are caged by human beings for their own fun having listened to the reading by the teacher and having read the poem yourself and having listened to all that we have seen so far starting from the thought for the day the need to appreciate the need to thank the concept of tiger reserve in india in particular about assam and little more information on that and about the author of the poem a tiger in the zoo leslie norris some information about him followed by the model reading then an introduction to the poem itself it's time to evaluate our understanding of all that we have listened all that we have heard 
with utmost attention from the beginning till now. Therefore, it's time to evaluate your understanding. So let me read some questions for your evaluation. Question number one. Who composed the peace prayer and when? Question number two. As per the unlocked down 4.0 guidelines issued by the union government, can the students of classes 9 to 12 be allowed to visit the school? How and why? Three, how many tiger reserves are found in India? And in particular in Assam, name them. Question number four, name any two books written by the poet Leslie Norris. And finally, the fifth question, what is the point of focus in the entire poem? Can you take time to answer them? Because this is an indication that you have understood all that we have seen so far. It's time to recap what we have seen from 9 o'clock till this minute. Peace prayer that we recited was composed by Saint Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Order of Friars Minor in 12th century AD. We need to cultivate a constant habit of appreciating everyone around us, especially our parents and grandparents and siblings. And as per the statistics of 2020, India has 50 tiger reserves and Assam has four such reserves. And the title of the poem that we began today is A Tiger in the Zoo. And this poem was written by Leslie Norris in which he explains the agony and helplessness of a caged tiger that lives in a zoo. And that poet explains what his life could be if he had been a free animal. And the poet tries a try to explain about the condition of animals that are being caged by human beings for their own fun and for their own pleasure. So it's time to thank you for paying keen attention to the entire class. And I'm sure you became more eager to know about tigers in India. You can take your time to search in Google and gather some more information about the National Animal of India, Tiger. And you can also try to explore some more information about the author of the poem, A Tiger in the Zoo, Leslie Norris. Come prepared for the explanation part tomorrow.